So I, I want to start with a, with a question, and that is, how many in the room think that WebRTC is about browser-to-browser -browser communication without a plug-in? Couple, okay. So that's, uh, that surprises me a little bit. I thought I'd see a lot more hands uh, than that going up. Because maybe even four months ago, I was talking to somebody that's a consultant in the industry and asked the question, where's the value and what is uh, WebRTC about? And that's what I got back. It's about browser-to-browser -browser communication without a plug-in. And you know, when I started working on this about uh, a little over two and, two and a half years ago, it was, it's not just about that. That's part of what the value is. But it's really about the underlying system that enables that and enables it, turns it into a web app development problem. If you look, there's probably 20 plus years of work that was on the VoIP side of that slide that was up there a minute ago, whether that's NAT traversal, getting through firewalls, the ICE protocol, and all the various things that are underneath, that went into making that work. And we've now abstracted that to the point that a web app developer or a mobile app developer can very quickly and very easily set up a real-time um, application in a peer-to-peer -peer mode. However, if the network settings aren't set correct, you've got to have this thing called turn that sits out there. If you want to get outside of four, maybe five parties, you're going to have to have some kind of selective forwarding. And that puts underneath the need for now a platform that has to exist in order to enable this application to actually run. You saw a couple of those that, that popped up on the slide uh, in there. So what Skadans is about, at the heart of the system, there's a, what we call platform RTC, which is built on some of those components that I just described. The ability to do traversal, the ability to put the signaling element in to say who needs to connect to, to who in a very flexible uh, fashion. So not just as a telephone call or a video call and that kind of a paradigm, but how do you shift that media around and how do you connect groups that need to be connected when they need to be connected. We use the peer-to-peer -peer fashion uh, where it can be used. We're smart about where we keep media. If it's going to stay inside of a local area network, why move it out if that's where it's going to be produced and consumed, replayed, stored, then keep it where it needs to be. On top of that, once we built this out, there was an application that just did basically uh, web chat through a browser. There was a guy in the um, commercial drone industry who was doing a test flight on a range in North Carolina and was going into the Fort Wayne, Indiana Police Department to do a demo, and his streaming server went down. And I'd given him access to our online system called POC, and he got it, had his own room in there. And he couldn't get a hold of his engineer to bring that streaming uh, server back up, and he's like, well, I'm not going to cancel the, uh, the demo and try to get another meeting. So what he did is he called the engineer in North Carolina and he said, I want you to go to this URL, talk.com slash Jason, and when you tell me, I'm going to tell you to do a screen share with me. And you see what he's going to do with this. So he sets it up on the other side, plugs it in, does his screen share. They can see the uh, video coming off of the drone, and then he decides he's going to take it one step further. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we can talk to the pilot in real time? His system didn't do that, but he knew that this, this would work. Yeah, that'd be cool. So they get into a conversation with the pilot, and then the next step was, well, wait a minute, I've got somebody, this will even be neater. One of the guys with a laptop, hey, use Chrome, go to this URL. Now it comes together, and the light bulb went on and said, we've now got command and control. We can see the video that's streaming in off of the drone. We can see its telemetry data. We can see where it is. We can talk to the pilot who's remote to us. And we can see all of this together in all participating parties. And they said, we, had to have that. we need to have this. So that was what exposed to me that, wait a minute, the, the drone element, if you will, is really an IoT element. It just happens to come and go and move around uh, quite a bit. An absolute explosion in that market that you see on a, on a daily basis. And there's a number of use cases that we've now uncovered that are outside of public safety uh, as well to, to utilize the platform. But at the heart of it, it is this platform RTC concept uh, that we expose, and that's basically just an API platform that allows you to get to the heart of the signaling, your underlying media transport and media infrastructure that's associated with WebRTC, and then we can expose that now into the application space where a web developer or a mobile developer can make use of that.
How are we doing on time, Chris? I can keep talking for, for, for quite a while. Let's just open it up for a couple of questions then, since we've got a minute or two in here, and I know the, uh, the next speaker is uh, tight on time. Any, quest any questions for Douglas? That's pretty interesting, actually. I mean, wh why would you pick the um, WebRTC over, I mean, I think over numerous other possibilities you so could have considered. So if you look considered. at, again, it was, it's, the, the ability to develop that application very quickly and to prove this um, is faster than anything else. I mean, you, the, there's a number of networks that you need to traverse across here, so you need a way to be able to use the underlying uh, transport, if you will, that exists coming out of the VoIP side of the signaling world. But you could uh, take a SIP client if you wanted to and kind of build something like that out. But you haven't got that abstraction now back to making it really into a web development or mobile development problem. The, the way the pilots control these drones is really through a mobile application. It's through a tablet. And so you need to be able to interact with that very easily. And again, it's the ability for people on the other side that are interacting. That could be a desktop client or it could be a browser-based thing. And there is no faster way to develop that than using uh, WebRTC.